Welcome to the fourth video of the Jakarta EE CRUD API tutorial. In this part, we're gonna have a look at the update part. So we will add a new endpoint to update existing persons um, in the database. As we are doing TDD, first let's add a test to actually verify that the, that the behavior we want to have is currently not working. So the test should fail. And let's call this um, should update person. For the test setup to work, I will steal some of our setup here. So we will create a new person later on and we'll then use this person to update it and separate it from our test above. So for this, um, here we don't actually need the response we get. So we can remove this. We now um, currently don't have a method for this. So we can stop here and switch back to our person resource and create a skeleton again for updating a person. So it will be a put and it will have a path variable of the person which we want to update. So again here at path at the at path annotation from JaxRS and the ID. It won't return anything if it was successful, so let's let's make it void here. And here we now have to use the ID again, which will be a long. And somehow the client has to tell um, the backend what should be updated. So um, the the question which person should be updated is answered with this ID, but the actual content somehow has to be transferred to the backend. And for this, I will, like we did when we created a person, create a um, person update request. So again, a simple data structure to hold the information about the update operation. So here, let's say a user can just update the first and the last name. The primary key can't be updated. So make it here first name. This is wrong. Again, we need the constructor and also the default constructor. This is wrong like we know from the video before. Also add the getters and setters here. And like we did for the creation request, we can also add some bean validation to this. So we don't want the user to create a um, not empty uh, or to update a person with a not uh, an empty first name or last name. So this should be it for here and now and that's okay so the, the method skeleton is now in place and we can use it here and let's say here update person the ID we get from the random and for the update part let's create a new person update request and let's rename our Duke to maybe a full bar a really simple one and if this is done, we now want to query for it again. So we can also steal it here and can again query for our Duke, which should be now renamed. And once we, we do this, um, when we now assert what we get back, we expect that Fu is now the first name. Actually here, let's make it a little bit better. Let's make this person here and read the entity here. I think we can say here this is first name foo and last name should be bar. So let's save this. So once this is done, we can now execute our test cases again and the test case should fail. So in line 45, uh, we are expecting foo but the first name of our um, person here was still Duke. 
so the actual implementation is uh, not working properly as it currently does nothing so this is okay one thing i noticed um, during recording this within our server xml the actual feature for beam validation is missing so to make use of this validation at the xrs boundary level we have to add it here so let's do this but this um, should be okay so now let's focus uh, back again on the implementation of our person resource here as right now the test is failing and we have to to make it work now what we can first do is um, if someone tries to update a person which is not present we can also give him here a, a bad request so let's first look for the first uh, for the person call it person to update again we can use the entity manager use the find method and we want to look for a person and the id we get from our path variable and if the person to update is null we can return here well let's let's maybe not make it void let's make it proper response here and let's make it status of um, 400 which is a bad request yes this is okay and if the person is present we can now actually update the person so we just have to update the attributes of our person and the entity manager will make sure to uh, update if something changed so get last name here and the same for first name this is the wrong one and for the response we can return here a an, an empty one which will be 204 which is okay and here is the build missing so now this should um, update a person if there is a request with a, a proper id given and it will use the person update request to to either update the last name or the first name both or nothing if, if nothing changed so now let's have a look at our test and execute it again and it's now green so our should update person test is now a, a successful test case and we can actually update a, a person we just created see you in the next video where we cover the last part of the crud api which is the delete step